Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zoratustra and broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. And uh, today we're going to be talking about relationships. So it's uh, something I haven't talked about for a long time, and we're going to get into that in details. Uh, those of you who are viewing on Facebook, uh, just be aware that I'm not able to uh, communicate with you because I only have, um, uh, we're broadcasting both on the Zoom and Facebook simultaneously, but I have access to what one screen. So it's not easy for me to go back and forth. And uh, if you're interested in communicating with me, uh, you can sign in to our website, which is zaratustra.tv. And um, through the uh, sign up on the academy and then come on Zoom and we can converse with each other. So, and those of you who are you, new for the first time, I welcome you. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a simple meditation. And after the meditation, I'm going to talk a little bit about the subject. And then you're also welcome to either ask me questions through the chat box or wave at me or unmute yourself and just ask me your question. For the moment, let's just <clears throat> be reminded that meditation is a very natural state. Uh, meditation is not something that you need to do. It's not a doing. It's something that happens on its own. So throughout our lives, we do go through meditative state without even knowing it. So what I would like you to do in this moment is just take a deep breath and just relax and just however you're comfortable. If you're sitting, if you want to we'll lean back, whatever position that is comfortable for you, just stay in that position and simply switch your attention rather than paying attention in the other world. You shift your attention, you move your attention inwards and you look, you kind of look inside. Now, what does it mean to look inside? What I mean is you can simply trace back your thoughts like when you're sitting here, you are aware of your thoughts. Thoughts come and go. Now, if you turn your attention inwards, then you're, you can trace your thoughts inwardly and see where they come from. It's super simple. You just, you're not doing anything. You're simply shifting your attention rather than putting your attention outside, you're bringing your attention inside. And simply, you are tracing your thoughts inwardly. So you just take a look, where do your thoughts come from? Where do they come from? You look inside, you're looking at them, and then all of a sudden, bang, everything becomes quiet. You realize there's no thoughts. You go into a deep silence. Without really trying to calm yourself down or not think. It's very easy. And simply just dive into it without really trying. No need to really force anything. It's a shift of paying attention. Your attention's gone inward.
Yeah, you're simply here. You're exercising your natural state, state of presence. It's tranquil. Tranquility is here. You're not putting an effort into it. You're not forcing yourself. And even if your mind, if your mind appears, arises, you are simply, you know, simply aware of it. You're watching the mind. Observing the mind. You have disconnected from the world of Maya. You have disconnected from the past and the future. And you're practicing the natural state, being here. It's like allowing for our nervous system to settle down.
Slowly, slowly come back. The um, subject of relationship has been very well discussed uh, throughout the years by so many different people. And uh, this, this is a good one, talking about relationships. And when I dug into it and investigated deeper, uh, the deeper I went into it, the more I realized that there's really only one relationship and that's all there is. And everything else, any other relationship, it's, it appears, it's an appearance that you have these different relationships with different people. Uh, especially a lot of times we're referring to relationship as a romantic relationship. 
and uh, to somebody that we're romantically attracted to, or maybe sexually attracted to, or there's some kind of energy or vibe that's happening. Basically, we're referring to a romantic relationship, something emotional. And of course, there's all kinds of different relationships. You know, you have a relationship with your mother or father or kids. Uh, you have a relationship with your best friend, your, your co-workers or your cat or dog. Um, but quite often when we talk about relationship, we're referring to romantic relationship quite often. That's the general thing. Again, as I said, that's not the only thing, of course. Uh, there's millions of different relationships uh, to different things, where you live, your town, the weather, the vegetation. Uh, so, but the romantic relationship, I start with that one, okay? Just to get that one out of the way and be clear about it. And, uh, it's something that appears and disappears. It's got a duration. And um, normally it doesn't last for a lifetime. And back in the day, you would experience these long-term romances or love relationships. Uh, in this day and age, as time has, it appears, again, it appears that it has speeded up and everything is the takeout. Everything is like you call for a pizza and it gets delivered to you. Or you drive through in America and you go to Starbucks and you pick up your uh, coffee or your Burger King or whatever, it's a drive-through relationship. And everything is fast and quick. It's like boom, 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 boom. And um, there's very little patience or tolerance in the romantic relationships these days uh, for a number of different reasons. But the main part of it is the fact that time appears to have exhilarated and it's going faster and the era of technology the digital world has made a lot of things available and the news travel very fast almost instantly and uh, so because of all these electromagnetic frequencies in the air and the fact that you can get information instantly about people and communicate with them versus back in the day that, and it wasn't very far away. I mean, we're talking about 80, 90 years ago, up to maybe 1940, 1930, 1940. Uh, I mean, radio existed, but you had to, let's say 100 years ago in 1920 or early 1900, you had to go to the center of the, the city, the center of the town. So if you lived in Gothenburg, if you lived in Stockholm or Oslo or Trondheim, you people would gather and go to the center of the city or the town where you could exchange things. You know, somebody would come from some village or about 20, 30 kilometers away and they would bring a goat and they were going to exchange their goat for some um, silver or some, some wool or people would bring their products or what they wanted to exchange to the center of the town and they would bar there with each other and exchange things. And in that place, they would also exchange information. Oh, what's going on in your province, you know? 
and say, oh yeah, we had a flood or we had a drought or we had a bad, bad season or we had a great season of agriculture or whatever news you had to travel with you and it would go very slow. So same as your relationships because the wheel is turning or it appeared to be turning slowly. So as a result of that, you wouldn't have a lot of choices. Your, your choices were a lot less. So if you lived outside of a capital city a hundred years ago, you know, you're basically in a village type in, you know, in comparison to today's standards and your choices were very limited. And most people, they were born in the same place. They would grow up, work or go to school if, they, if there was any school and would follow their parents' footsteps and, and their trade and would marry in the same area and would just live there. People didn't travel very much. It wasn't a trend merely because it wasn't convenient. It was very difficult. Traveling was like a major thing and it was dangerous and uh, had a lot of uncertainties in it. So, so same as relationships, your choices were a lot less and therefore your mind was not so occupied by so many different choices that you had, same as you walk into a supermarket today and, and uh, you're walking through the aisles and let's say you want to buy um, ketchup and there's like five different brands or you want to buy mustard or you want to buy olive oil and there's like 50 different bottles of olive oil. So back in the day, there, may, there were one or maybe two, maybe. So now you have so many choices and it's fast. And also because everything has speeded up, you want things now, right away. I want it now. So when it comes to shifts from something that would form very slowly, like a relationship and you, Let's say uh, you're living, for example, we're using Sweden. I talked to a couple of newcomers today from Denmark and Sweden. And uh, so uh, back in the day where, where you were living, it, it was a village. And now it's a town, it's a city, it's got internet, it's got freeways. You can go back and forth quickly. But back in the day, you had to travel a long time to get to a major port or to Copenhagen or to get to Gothenburg. Gothenburg then was a big deal for anything in its surrounding uh, in, the, in that part of the country. Or, so naturally you would develop relationship with people and you had to take your time and it had to go deeper because you didn't have a lot of choices. So, and the mentality of back in the day was, of course, based on the belief system, and a lot of it was based on religion, uh, that you marry one person and you're gonna stay with this person till death uh, takes you apart and it was a curse. You could not separate from someone. You could not divorce them. And uh, it was just not acceptable. It wasn't something people would do. And you would be looked at as a second class citizen or someone unstable or unreliable. And it would be a curse to the tribe. We're talking about like 100 years ago. And even to maybe 50s, early 60s, till there was the, uh, a revolution 
that started to happen. But that's how it was looked at. And naturally, the mind was not really wandering around and was not, didn't know about quick, tack, 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 this person, that person. And you, of course, you didn't have internet and you didn't have availability of having access to thousands of different websites. You can meet people from all kinds of walks and uh, they're available. And you can click and talk to them and get information, send pictures, communicate um, in whatever age, you know, there's websites for single Christian ladies, websites for single Muslim men, there's websites for whatever, you know, meet, meet Jewish men, women, or whatever it is that you like, it's there, and you can tap into it. And it's fast and you go through different people's profiles and no, yes, no, yes, this one, I'll send a message. So everything is quick. Everything is fast food. So the relationships are fast food too. So, oh, you, yes. I'm, I'm sorry that I'm stopping you. It seems like your Facebook is, the, is not recording. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's an issue, fundamental problem I have where I am. So okay. our energy is not very well here. So okay. yeah, thank you. thanks for telling me. Yeah, people are just writing to me, you know, so it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. So, um, so this is, so you, you must understand, you have to look at it like, okay, it, everything evolved and changed, you know, as you can see, life is fast. And same as relationships. Now, that's only one part, that's just about the romantic relationship. And also what, I mean, you can go through other relationships, the way you meet people and friends, uh, co-workers that you're meeting, everything is fast, everything is quick. So, and the way I see it, also we have to, and I'm gonna, I'm going to keep dissecting this deeper and deeper and it's going to it's going to clear a lot of things for you for all of us to understand this whole relationship thing and right now basically I'm focusing on a romantic relationship but what I'm saying you can apply it to pretty much any relationship once you understand the fundamentals of it and you get it like how it, it's working a part of this relationship thing is also culturally is how we've been programmed to believe in things. It's a belief system as well. It's a religious belief system. A lot of it is based on control and a lot of it is an illusion and it's not real. So, because number one is you have to understand everything in time space has a duration. It appears, it rises, and it falls. So there's a rise and then there's a fall. And that is with anything. Nothing in this life is going to last. Nothing in this life is going to be forever. So same as relationships they appear and they disappear now i'm not saying that there are no cases of a couple staying together or a couple of people whether they're straight or gay or whatever and i'm not saying they're not going to stay together forever yeah it happens 
but it's becoming more a rare. It's a rarity these days. And that rarity is very much based on the technology and the era we're, we're in with also consideration of the dissolution of religious belief too. And that cultural pressure that was on us, that if you got married to somebody, you have to stay with them all of your life and you're stuck. And all of those belief systems started to crumble and kind of disappear and become meaningless as time goes forward. The naturally, because you have a lot of options and the time has speeded up, naturally you have to go through quick relationships. That's what is happening. It's not even a choice that you're making. It's just a part of the era of what is going on. Everything is fast. Boom, 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 boom. So that's, that's one part of it. Another part of it that we need to look at is that how from childhood we have been conditioned. And I'm not saying anybody did it purposely. This is something which has been happening ever since the ever since, okay? That we get brainwashed and we get programmed by our A, parents, B, our schooling, C, our environment where we're living, the government, the media, the television, movies, internet, and everything is designed to create this thing that love and acceptance is something that you get from the outside. And something you have to fight for and something you have to earn. So I give you a small e example that you're I remember, I don't know, I was six or seven years old and, and uh, it's evening time. My dad is back from work. My mom's around. My dad would maybe ask, oh, how's, you know, little Zaratustra doing? Mommy has been a good boy. And my mom or maybe my nanny, I don't exactly remember. Maybe they would say, oh, yeah, he's been such a good boy. He did all of his homeworks. He, he ate his spaghetti. Uh, he had, he took all his vitamins, uh, he's such a good boy. And then my daddy would say, oh, my son, come over and come and sit on my lap. And now he puts me on his lap and he's holding me, he's kissing me, he's playing with me and he's telling me how great I am, how good I am because I was obedient and I did everything they wanted me to do. So I was a good boy. I ate my spaghetti and I took my vitamins. So now I'm getting love. Now I'm being accepted. Well, how many times you got love and accepted? If let's say your parents left and they went to dinner and you poured ketchup all over the couch and on the carpet. And the carpet is beige. And, the, couch, and, and the, the couch is beige, and your parents come back, do you think they're gonna say, what a good boy or what a good girl, and come and sit on my lap and let me kiss you and do, 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 do. No, you're gonna get spanked. You know, you're gonna get a couple of spanks on your butt for being a bad boy or a bad girl. So you're gonna get a negative response. response. So what happens is you get trained from early age that this, is, this relationship is a transaction. Unconsciously, you start to realize that, you may not even know it consciously, that you need to do something good or something that they perceive as good in order to get love. 
acceptance. Then you're growing a little bit longer and you're watching TV and you're watching these love movies, okay? And you know, you remember that back in the day, a lot of, there was especially the French. You want to watch some French movies, classical French movies, that there's a couple really married, they're really in love with each other and they can't get to each other. And the girl goes and commits suicide. She jumps off the bridge in the river of sin or the guy kills himself because they can't get to each other. And uh, which in a way is, you know, in this one thing I like about French, French movies is, uh, especially older ones, they're real, you know, and everything's, everything's based on really relationships and emotions. It is, you know, dramatic. It's very different than Hollywood movies that they're into crashing cars or some sci-fi entity appears and kills everybody and has got all these powers. You know, it's like a completely different story. A lot of the movies are about talking, relationships, processing. It's very emotional. And, uh, but it's also very real. It's very connected to human life. So, so anyway, uh, the boy and the girl, they can't get into, get to each other. And, you know, one of them goes and commits suicide. So, but what I'm referring to, and also today, if you're listening, you know, to different songs, a lot of the songs about like, okay, I couldn't get to her or I'm looking for love in all, you know, different places. Uh, I'm looking for her. I don't know when I'm going to find her. She's my soulmate, blah, 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 blah. So a lot of the songs that you're also hearing is objectifying love, that love is something outside and in a person and you have to get it. You have to get to it. You have to accomplish it. Then you can watch a lot of series of newer movies in the newer era of, for example, <clears throat> it's a sports, it's a school movie. And there's a boy and a girl, they like each other. And uh, the boy is a jock and he's an athlete, but he's poor. Uh, the girl is going out with some other guy who's rich or smart or whatever. And this guy finally has to excel and he has to throw the last touchdown or make the last goal. And it's a football game and he shoots and he makes a goal and they win. And then as they win, he gets the girl. He gets the trophy girl. That's the trophy girl he gets. Because he accomplished something and he won, now he's getting love. He's getting the girl. Okay, does that sound familiar to you? Have you seen any movies like that? You know, probably a hundred of them in your life, minimum. What I'm saying is this is a form of conditioning your mind without you being aware of it that Love, relationship, is something you have to go and get it. It's something, it's outside. It's something you have, you have to accomplish it. You have to find love. You have to find acceptance. Anybody, is this clicking? Does anyone, yeah, just give me a little sign so I make sure you're, you're getting it, right? Can you see that? Like from childhood, from the time you were born, and you have this relationship with your parents, is it's a transaction. It's give and take. So naturally, you begin to... 
be trained in your mind, in your psyche, that love and acceptance is something that is not readily available, is something you have to get it. You have to earn it. And there is countless number of movies in the world and songs and hints and TV series that you have to get rich in order to get the girl or you have to be super hot to get the guy. And it's, you have to go get it from the outside. So I'm going to rewind the tape one more time is we're talking about love relationship. So the era changed. So everything's becoming fast, faster. So it's quick. Like, you know, you're going to Facebook, you're going to some dating site Tinder or Bumble or whatever, you know, whatever dating site you're going through and you're going through people. And today you're just like doing this. Swipe right or swipe left. This way they're deleted, this way they're good. So it's fast. It's a drive-through. It's you call the pizza gets delivered. So it's A, it's shifted to that. B is that you think it's coming from the outside. You have to earn it. That's you've been designed to think that way from the time you were born. You didn't you don't even have a choice. It's already programmed in there. So which whatever I'm saying is going to bring me to one conclusion. And this conclusion is that A, that whatever relationship, whomever you connect with and you merge in and whatever connection you have, okay, it's already doomed to fail. It's already designed for failure. A is that everything in the world that appears to be, it's got a duration. None of it is permanent. B, you've already been programmed that everything is fast and it's okay. So you just don't have any patience to go deeper into anything because why go deeper when you can just swipe it and go to the next one? Why work on it? Be patient with it when you have so many choices. And see, you're already damaged and programmed to believe that the love, the romantic love, is coming from outside. It's another place, another person. You have to go get it. You have to accomplish it. And to accomplish that, there is a list of things that you have to check mark. It's a lot of pressure. You have to have a nice body. You have to be fluent. You gotta be a suave. You have to dress like, you gotta have your hair slicked. You have to look good. You have to be smart, you have to have money, you have to have a nice car. It depends where in the world you live. But there is like all these check marks that you have to check in. They all have to be yes. So there's a lot of pressure on that. Of the stuff you have to have. And when I went deeper inside, I realized that there is only one relationship in, in this life. There's only one relationship. You only have one relationship in your entire life. Only one. 
Each and every one on this planet only has a one relationship. That's it. And that relationship is to the self. There's only one true relationship. And that relationship is to the self. And that is the only true relationship that exists. Everything else comes and goes. Everything else has a duration. Even to your best friend, to your mother, to your father, to your children. As much as you're connected, as much as you love them, it's got a duration. There's a beginning and there's an end to it. And you don't have to believe what I'm telling you. Look at it. Take a look. Look at your relationships. See what's going on. They come and they go. Especially love relationships. Specifically, love romantic relationships. They come, they go. And it appears that the duration is shorter than before. And a major part of it is that un until you come to this enlightenment, to this awakening, to this realization that love and acceptance is something you have to recognize within yourself. You have to discover that love is here and it's coming from you. It's your own presence, it's your divine being, it's your connection to God, it's the presence of God within you that you feel love. And until you really discover that within yourself, you're not really free because you're looking for it outside of yourself. Because you've been programmed and brainwashed to project it outside. And it's not your fault, believe me. I'm not pointing finger at you. It took me 30 years to figure that out. And sitting with so many masters and teachers before I came to that realization, I didn't know that. Before I came to that understanding that the love I'm looking for, the romantic love that I want, it's, I have to discover it within myself. I had, heard the words and today you read it in a lot of spiritual books but that's not the point you have to get it you have to understand it and as you understand it and you start to develop self-love recognizing your own divinity recognizing that you are complete after all the noise, if you go beyond the noise and you really dive within yourself, like when we were meditating earlier or when we had our retreat, those moments of like completion, like you're in this place that it is complete. And you're very happy and complete with yourself got to recognize and it may take time and you may work on it but at least you're on the right track because somebody pointed it out to you and it makes sense that that relationship I need to discover it within myself I have only one relationship and that is to the self to the divine self, 
to the presence of the self here. That's the only relationship that doesn't come and go. Everything else comes and goes. Everything else is an image of this one. But you're not getting it outside because as soon as you try to grab it, it disappears or finally you get to it, but it won't last very long. It changes because you haven't really discovered it within yourself. You got to figure it out. You have to recognize it that you by yourself sitting here in your apartment alone in the middle of nowhere or in your house or whatever with no entertainment. You can be okay with yourself and you can just love yourself the way you are, not the way you think you should be. Not when your parents told you, be a good boy and eat the spaghetti and the vitamins and we're going to love you. That's a way you should be. No, you're recognizing the way you are as you are. And you start accepting yourself the way you are, however you are, however you look. Wherever you are status-wise in the world, whether you got money or you don't, whether you accomplished or you didn't accomplish, can you accept and love yourself and recognize your divine self, recognize your relationship with your own divine self, your presence, your being. It may take time. Work on it. Recognize it. You're on the right track now because you got the clue. And as you come to that and you start to recognize it and love yourself, then you're going to see reflections in the other world, in the romantic world. Your opposite starts getting attracted to you. You're attracted to this completeness, to this wholeness, to this person that has disconnected itself from being needy. The neediness is not starting slowly disappear. It's an internal thing. It's an inside job. So excuse me. Um as this revolution revelation starts to happen and you start to recognize that that your attention is turning inwards into the recognition of your own self your presence and you begin to love and accept yourself and recognizing this is the only permanent relationship that exists And then what happens in that recognition, something shifts in your relationships with others. Because others, basically, they're reflecting back where you're at. It's kind of a reflection. I mean, everything is a reflection. You're not the only one. Everything is mirroring everything constantly because all of it is one. There's no separation in it. So it's a dance that is dancing with itself all the time. Same as your relationship with your guru, with the sat guru, with the sage, the sage. With 
all these other relationships, they all have durations. They come, they go, they come, they go. They get stronger, they get weaker. So you recognize that in that recognition that there's no permanency in it, except there is one. And that recognition that this is the only permanent relationship that exists, then something shifts, something changes. Because you're no longer projecting, you have unconditioned, undone what's been done to you for thousands of years, generations after generations of being programmed in a certain way. And finally, you've been able to undo that and free yourself from this will, from this maya, that there is only one real relationship, and that's to the self. And of course, you welcome everything else, but you're not projecting on it. You're not looking for it to complete you because you already discovered you're complete. Does it mean that if I've come to that relationship, I can just sit alone with myself for 30 years? No. For example, I'm a kind of person who needs to be around people. I need connection. It depends on how your makeup is. You know, some people are loners. They really enjoy just being alone a lot of times. Some people really like being around other people. But what it means is you have transcended this illusion. You have gone beyond the illusion that love and acceptance in a romantic relationship it has to come from another person to make you complete. You realize that you are complete and cool. If you hook up with somebody and it's there, fantastic, but they're not gonna make you complete. You already recognize that. And that's huge. That's a major accomplishment. If you can come to that in this lifetime, you have accomplished a lot. And then from there, we can just keep going, you know, relationship to your parents, your relationship to your children, relationship to your friends, to your boss, to your animals. It just keeps going and going. Connection. I'm not saying those connections, they're not real. But there is one that is above everything else. There's one that doesn't come and go. Recognize that one. Anybody has any questions? Any comments? Anything you want to ask or share? You can either unmute yourself or Write a note on the chat box. Yes, please, Christopher, unmute yourself. Yes, hello and thank you. Um, that was very giving, uh, first of all. And my comment and I guess my, my conclusion uh, from uh, what I've heard you talk about now is that if you have choices and you have uh, decisions to make, also, ultimately, it's about yourself to make a choice and a decision to be uh, in a good relationship with 
your own self as much as possible. Yes. Yes. Maybe it's very simple to <laughs> just uh, uh, interpret it like that. Um, but to have the awareness all the time uh, in a, any given situation that reminding yourself to uh, be in a good relationship with yourself. Right. Yeah. Uh, when you say that, are you including the, the mind chatters that their time, I mean, there, the moments you make a mistake or something happen and you hear your mind says, you idiot. Absolutely, yeah. This, are you saying like every moment you're, you never hear those words or, or you hear those words and you move on? Yeah, um, um, I guess it's both mentally, of course, and, uh, um, and uh, emotionally, of course, right? That, that, that we uh, often uh, forget uh, being unaware of uh, losing uh, focus of uh, the, 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 the love towards oneself and that relationship. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're not fighting yourself. Uh, yeah. 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 The moments yeah. that, I mean, you know, maybe you go to a half an hour or one hour or a half a day or whatever that is, it depends on the person that the mind takes over and yeah. it keeps blaming itself or blaming you. I mean, basically, they're both the same, and it keeps blaming. And then when you catch yourself, yeah. uh, if you have the awareness, recognizing it, then you're free from it. You get out of it. So my, I can only speak of my own experience because I'm not in anybody else's head, so I don't know what's going on in someone else's head. I know what's going on in my own head <laughs> to a certain point. Yeah, there are moments like it takes over. And uh, I may hear like a voice saying, you idiot, you so stupid, you made the same mistake over and over again. Yeah. And, and then when you recognize that it's your mind is judging because my mind judges everything else other people, other scenarios, um, before I can catch it, it makes its own judgment. So, but then when you recognize it, you're back, you're back here again. So that part is okay. And, and I'm not just addressing it to you, I'm addressing it to everyone that it's okay if your mind goes crazy and become ju judgmental of yourself specifically. And once you catch it, you're back. You're back in the center. And nothing really happened. Hmm. Yeah. So, other, other than a, a possible uh, roller coaster ride emotionally and. Emotionally. Yeah, roller coaster ride, exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah. But it's. You know, the roller coaster ride, it's kind of, it appears to be a necessity. It appears to be. To, it forces you to come to this place of the watcher, you know, because it's so painful and it's so redundant and it happens so many times. And it's kind of, you have to burn this process. You have to keep going through it so many times. It appears to be that way. To the point that you start to, because it's so painful and it's so up and down and it's so redundant and it's happened so many times that at one point it forces you to step outside and just completely be watchful of it, be aware of it even though it's happening. Because there isn't anything you can do or I can do about the emotional roller coaster. I have no 
power over my emotions. I can't control them to be up or down. Yeah, if I have a lot of anxiety, I can just go pour some wine or drink some booze to mellow down the anxiety of the nervous system or take a Valium or smoke some weed or whatever or have sex or whatever you got to do or go for a run somehow to try to mellow down your nervous system. But it's rise and fall is outside of my hand. I, there's not much I can, there's nothing I can do about it. But I can just be aware of it. When I remember, the awareness is there. And it doesn't have any power over the awareness. You can be up and down and up and down, but that doesn't touch the fact that you're aware of it. So what we're trying to learn here is not a system to control our thoughts or our emotions because it doesn't work. We have tried that. Thousands of people before us have tried to create a system to control, be in control of their emotions. And it just does not work. The key is to, to be aware of them, have an awareness that they're up and be aware that they're down. And in that awareness, a separation happens between something which is not changing, something which is observing of something that's going up and down. Who's aware of these ups and downs? Who's aware of, if I'm emotionally heartbroken because of a woman or a man or whatever broke my heart, how am I aware of it? Who's aware of it? You're certainly aware of your ups and downs because they're very strong and, and they, they grab you. You can't, you have to be really numb not to notice it. And we've been doing it all of our lives, really paying attention to our emotions or busy mind. But what we haven't done is to step outside of it, to observe it. What we've been trying to do all these years is how to control them. And yeah, there's some people, you know, maybe military people or hardcore of some sort that they have been doing a lot of training on really controlling their emotions and not showing their sorrow, not crying, not to show their anger or whatever. And they just created this face of, it's solid, you, don't, you can't read their emotions. But that doesn't mean internally they don't feel it. So my experience is I, could, I cannot really, yeah, you, everybody's trying to control their emotions. You know, if you are in a public situation and something happens, you get a little bit sad, you know, you're gonna try to control yourself not to cry in front of a bunch of people you don't know or try to control your anger to the point you can, so you don't blow it. Of course, we're all try. I try, so. But can I control my emotions 100%? No, of course not. But I can observe it. I can fall back into this place of the witness, of the observer, fall back into this place of that doesn't change. 
recognizing this part of me that doesn't change, coming to that place and then observing anything that changes. So now there's a separation and you become free to that separation. Thanks for bringing it up, uh, Christopher. That was a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. I hope I answered your question. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Very good. And let's put a little bit light on romantic relationships. How's that? Is that something you want? Should we talk about it? Or, or that's a no-no? is that um, also another thing I recognize that I meet somebody and I feel a spark and there is energy. There is like, what I've discovered is there is a presence that appears between me and someone else. something appears in between. You can call it God, you can call it the spirit, you can call it love, whatever it is, something appears. And in that appearance between you and someone else, you feel this deep connection, deep love, deep attraction with the person. And when it's mutual, then they feel the same thing. And then you can say, I'm in love with them. Because both people recognize, both people notice this energy in between. And of course, since we've been brainwashed and we've been, project, we've been programmed to project it on the other person, so in this projection, I'm projecting that this woman, this girl is the one, this object. I'm projecting it on an object. So when she leaves me and she says, you know, for whatever reason, she's, she's not feeling it anymore. She met someone else or she got tired of me or whatever happens, you know? The person you're in love with, they dump you, they leave, they don't want you anymore. So what happens is we crash, we go through a deep heartbreak. We're heartbroken. And that also is something we've been programmed to believe because it's not real. And it's not real because you didn't really fall in love with the person. You didn't fall in love with the meat, okay? It wasn't this person you fell in love with. What happened was this person, for whatever cosmic reason, at that certain moment in your life, was the, a part of the chemistry, it was a chemical reaction or alchemy of God that needed to be in that moment in your life that the two start seeing each other and then the real thing appears in the middle. So it triggers this love it triggers this presence that really is deep inside yourself. Because remember, there's only one relationship and that is to the self. So another person, when you meet someone and you fall in love with them, you didn't really, you're not really falling in love with the meat. You're not falling in love with their body or their face. You, you are falling in love with love. 
you are going back into the essence of the presence of the love that has always been with you and is always with you. So when the meat leaves, for someone who's awakened, they don't go through a heartbreak. They don't fall apart. Their life doesn't end there. Because they were, they never really projected it on the meat. They didn't project it on this guy or this girl. Now the girl is gone. I lost love. No, I have discovered love here within myself. I can never lose it. It's impossible because I never gained it. It was never somewhere I got it and now I lose it. It's always been here. I am the source of it. It comes from me. It's always here. So in that recognition, you come to this freedom. Now, I'm not saying you're really in love with someone and they leave and you're like a robot and you don't feel anything. Of course, you miss their physical presence naturally because we're not robots, we're human beings. You can miss their physical presence, but you're not going to be destroyed and go through major depression or wanting to commit suicide or feeling your life is over because you lost her or you lost him. Because down deep, you know that the presence is here. And the more you become aware of it, the more you develop this quality inside yourself. And the more, the less you get fooled by a romantic relationship based on projecting it on them. That doesn't mean, don't take me wrong, it doesn't mean that you're going to you connect with someone and you don't go for it and you don't feel for him and you're not happy to see him or wanting to be with him, okay? I'm not talking about becoming a robot. I'm talking about awareness. You don't fall asleep because you can no longer project this love on a body, on a meat you start to recognize it within yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, does it make any sense? I know it's a little bit, you know, this is deep, but, and it's not something super easy, like intellectually you may understand it or what I'm saying, but it's, it takes time to implement this because culturally as a race for thousands of years, we've been programmed to project it outside of ourselves. So this is not something that I say it to you and you hear what I say and then in five minutes, it's done. It takes time to really implemented within yourself because you have to recognize yourself recognize that you're the one you're looking for the real love is here anything from the outside is reflecting that back to you anybody you meet in the outer world is pointing the finger back at that place within yourself And when you go through a heartbreak, it's kind of a blessing because it forces you to dig deep within. So you start to see it differently. And that helps you to liberate. Because liberation is the ultimate goal to become free, freedom. inner freedom. That's what we're interested in, to become free internally.
I, it would be interesting if one day, of course, it's hypothetical and the utopia or wishful thinking is that we taught these things to our children from young age. And we could educate them correctly. Help them understand. It would be interesting. It saves a lot of heartaches. But I guess it was, it's meant to be the way it is. So. It looks like we have like a few people from Poland or uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, Katazina, hello. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Hello. Hi. Where, <laughs> where are you from? I am from Poland. Poland, okay. Yes, and I want to say that I am very touched by your sharing, by your presence, and it touched me very deep. And I feel it. Uh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm very happy that you're, you're here today. Is this the first time you come to the academy? Yeah, I am first time. It was unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone, everyone. Well, welcome. I'm glad you were able to make it. And I'm happy. Um, our brother Christopher brought a good subject up, so... so. This was meant to happen today. So welcome, always welcome to join us. Thank you, thank you very much. And I guess we have Kasia, Kasia Karipinska, Karipinska, I like. Hi Kasia, do you wanna say hello? I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly or not. No, okay, shy. All right. Hi. Hi, I am. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, from Poland, too. And I'm a friend of Kasia Suminska. OK. Yeah, yes, well. She, she, she was invited me uh, for, <laughs> for this, uh, this Zoom today. Oh, great. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, well, yes. Well. Uh, I, uh, I, I have, uh, I have, uh, I have something to do. You know, I'm uh, still hearing you, uh, but uh, but I do uh, something else. That's that's why I have no um, ca camera. You know, right? Uh, I can I I, I can uh, start video for a moment. Yeah, it's up hello. To you. Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So your, your, your name is pronounced Kasia? Uh, Katarzyna, Katarina. In Polish, yes, this is the short, you know, in Polish, Kasia. Kasia, okay. Well, Kasia, welcome. Yes. Yeah. welcome, welcome, hello. I've been in Poland a few times. So. I know, to Arslibra. To, yeah. To Vlodek, yeah. yes, I know. Yeah, right. So. Yeah, Actually, okay. Yeah, welcome, and feel You're welcome. free to come back anytime you, you wish. Uh, keep in mind, Thank you. since you registered through our system, we will send you a copy of this, of the recording. So it's a link to the YouTube, so you get it. Yeah, I do miss the tours. Um, I don't know if they're gonna happen again or not, but I do miss when I was touring, going, coming to, See all your beautiful people, different countries, meeting new friends. In Poland also? To Poland? Uh, say, that, say that again? Uh, I have a question. If you, you are playing, do, do you have pl plan to be in the Poland this year? Well, no. Uh, well, the, 
I haven't talked about it to my organizer because from what I hear, it's not really possible to travel or to have events, public events. I don't know what it's like in Poland now. Has it opened up? Not, not too much no. not on this moment. Right. Not so not. we're all going to have to wait and see what happens. So hopefully if the good grace wants to we go back to, to what it used to be or be able to travel again and have events, I, I would love doing it. Well, until then, at least we're able to get together here, so. Cool. All right, well, anyone has any comments, any questions? And is, we're coming close to the end of our uh, academy. Okay. Uh, those of you who registered for the shamanic healing uh, event and also um, I have to come up with a new date that I can offer it to you. Um, and I'm just waiting to figure out what's going on with the uh, construction around my house, but I will be coming up with a date. So we, we will do it. As far as that, um, the workshop retreat, um, that's longer than originally we set it up for four days, four hours a day. Uh, I need to uh, make sure I find a block of time that I'm, we're not gonna be bo bothered by the construction next to my house. So I, I will do, I will come up with something. So hang in there.
So after we finish up, I um, recommend that you take a few moments and just simply stay in silence, stay in this space and spend a little time with yourself, the holy self, your own being, your presence. Hang out with this one before you get engaged with the world. Uh, my website is zaratustra.tv. Our social media pages is Zaratustra 5B. And my email is info at zaratustra.tv. And if you have any comments you'd like to connect with me, you're welcome to uh, write to me. Um, also, as I mentioned, this is the last season I offer the life training program. So if you're interested in doing this private coaching program, which is, takes three months, um, contact me and uh, set up an appointment with you and we talk about it and we move on from there. Info at zaratustra.tv. I have one more question. Yes, please. Uh, I want to sing for everybody. It is okay? Yes, absolutely. If you write me an email and then uh, we'll make an appointment and then I'll just go through the whole thing with you. Okay. Did, you, did, did, did it make sense? Let me uh regarding the life training program is that what you're talking about uh, what you were referring to i don't understand too much now <laughs> <laughs> right right write an email to me okay okay info at zaratustra.tv okay and, uh, and then we will we'll talk about this. Uh, uh, but yeah. yeah, right now the energy is high and yeah. Christopher, go ahead, please. Um, I'm not sure if I heard it right, but and maybe it's not on my business, but I thought she uh, offered to sing. Sing, yes, yes. Please. I'm yeah. not sure, but yeah. that was what I got into the ears that you offered to sing. Yes, yeah. thank you, Christopher. Okay, you're welcome. Please. Yeah. Thanks, Christopher. I didn't understand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, please sing. We'd love to hear it. Okay. Thank you. Oh.
Thank you. That was beautiful. It's very nice. Look forward to seeing you all next Wednesday. Sending you my love and be well. <laughs>